Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Before I am going to give another round of tutorial video, let me say first thank you to all of you sa pagsuporta o pagsubaybay sa ako mga videos. Because of your support, my channel was accepted already in the YouTube Partner Program and that makes me eligible for monetization. So this will not be realized without your encouragement and support. So to those who are enjoying my tutorial videos, Please do not forget to subscribe and like my videos and turn notification on so that you will be updated if I have new uploaded videos. So again, uh, thank you very much everyone. So now for my next tutorial video, I am going to give you some tips in writing your RRL or review of related literature. Also, I will give extra topics in making your conceptual and theoretical framework. Now. Assume you as a researcher already identified a topic that can and should be studied. The search can begin for related literature on the topic. So, what is the purpose of your RRL section? The purpose why we need to present and write RRL is to share with the reader the results of other studies that are closely related to the one being under Again, another is to relate a study to a larger ongoing dialogue in the literature, filling in gaps and extending prior studies. And to provide a framework for establishing the importance of the study as well as a benchmark for comparing the results with other findings. Now, I am going to give you some tips what are the salient contents you should include in writing your RRL, be it in quantitative or qualitative research. In case your study is quantitative research, for a quantitative research, you should include discussion of your concerned variables with indicators, including sources which should be grouped by variable of the study and relationship of variables or either difference, impact, influence, whichever is applicable in your quantitative undertaking. Each variable must be listed and labeled as subheading. So if you have job freedom and salary as your two independent variables, you should have two subheadings. Under the paragraph or paragraphs of that subheading, you should discuss contents of your specific variable which include the indicators. So, unsa mani ato ang ginatawag ng mga indicators. So, given this example study, we're in as you can see in the statement of the problem, we have human resource management practices as our independent variable and employee satisfaction as our dependent variable. Each variable has their own indicators. These are the indicators. Our independent variable has six indicators, namely job organization, recruitment, screening, selection, performance evaluation, and promotion. While our dependent variable has five indicators, namely compensation, working conditions, reward incentive system, training and development, career planning, and development. To continue, this holds true both for quantity and quality study. Now, in providing sources, it should be not earlier than 2005. So, mas better jud na recent ang mga related literature na ibutang. Except for theories and very important authors ha, pwede mga 10% from old articles may be allowed. Intended only for theories and important concepts. Also, again, 
you need to observe coherence by using appropriate transition terms in your paragraph and paraphrase do not copy then paste also you need to learn the current style in writing your related literature such as resonation inventory compare and contrast do not worry we will have a separate discussion on this later another tip is that you just need to cite only the last name of the author then here no initial or first name or middle name do not worry i will have a separate tutorial on how to cite your references using apa way as well as the index parenthetical citation every paragraph of your rrl should contain at least one author as to the how many number of pages you should have usually uh, it comprises 10 to 20 pages now, as I said, I am going to share to you the techniques for writing a good RRL. And this is from the book Literati Literature Review in Contemporary Purview by Sir Amorado. So as you can see, there are seven techniques, namely inventory, presentation, compare and contrast, reinforce and debunk, converge and diverge, departure, argue and persuade. But I will emphasize the first three techniques only. Anyways, this is available for purchase at QM Main Campus is published by Mokia Publishing House Incorporation. Now, these techniques really helped me a lot in writing my RRL. So let us start with inventory. According to the book of Sir Amorado, inventory is enumeration of literature with a storyline in paragraph. The example, as you can see in my discussion, is an excerpt from the book of Sir Amorado. So, as you can see and as you read it, the opening line is to present on the table that there have been several views about poverty in the Philippines. The transition is provided that there are those who argue against the government's economic policies, while others are very specific on the factors that reinforce poverty in the country. So this is where inventory comes in. Foreign intervention and foreign debt by Constantino 1979 and Simbula 1982. Religion by Garcia 1993. Population by Conception 2004. Elitism by Bello et al. 2004. The lack of education by David 2005 and corruption. Note the sequence of publication years to provide literature progression. Now, the focus of this RRL is on corruption. So, the inventory of other factors of poverty also serves as a transition. The concluding lines closes the paragraph that, while these views have valid grounds on their own, this study would like to highlight the extent of corruption in the country's well-being. Moving on to another technique, and that is resonation. So this means to share a commonality or similarity of idea or concept. This refers to citing a similar literature to drive home a point or strengthen the basis of the message. Now, the example you can see in my discussion is an excerpt from the book of Sir Amorado. In the example, Alejo cited Promotio Justicia as a literature to make his point that conflict and violence originate in corruption and bad governance. Then, he proceeds further on this point coming from his opening premise made stronger by resonating with a literature. So, this example is a straightforward way of doing resonation. Without a cited literature, the idea can present as a mere opinion or speculation. So, yun the meaning yun na. But with a supporting literature, the idea is made scholarly and provides some basis. 
literature thus makes one's ideas or viewpoints substantiated, well-founded, and well -founded. So that's how important the use of literature in our study. Now, let us discuss how to compare and contrast in our making. So, compare and contrast is a comfortable technique of presenting related literature. The transitions are made very clear with the use of supporting conjunctions like and also as well as in addition or opposing conjunctions like but, nevertheless, however, in the contrary, although, now, the example as presented in my discussion is an excerpt from the book of Sir Amorado. So, um, the example uses inventory, although the intention is to compare and contrast. The first part of the paragraph intends to compare with an inventory of literature and references. The contrasting transition is provided, but these forms and structures move in contrasting fashion when it comes to their sources of power. This line is a sequel to the next part of the paragraph that aims to provide contrast. The same inventory techniques is used in citing various literature and their corresponding references of class. I want you to read in the description of my video down below. I provided there the link of my sample RRL for your reference. You can download it freely and you are welcome. In return, just subscribe in my YouTube channel, share it to your friends, and watch some ads po para maka-earn po ng ako ang channel. So thanks in advance and I would be glad to reply you if you will comment something in my video for suggestions for recommendation so that I can improve further the way I am delivering my video tutorials in my channel. Now, I am going to share to you how I organize my RRL. So this is usually the matrix I have in preparing my RRL. I usually use a Microsoft Excel format or Google Sheet. Um, for this so that I can easily manipulate my data. So, meaning I can do sorting easily and make appropriate formatting according to what I want. So, my matrix consists of six columns and every time I get new important articles or contents in my research, I usually put it here. So, it has a specific cell for the author, description or hypothesis, findings, data and methodology, some notes or remarks then the source usually in APA format already so you can actually modify this according to the way you want your information to be organized so what's important is you have already your prepared RRL in case you are needing this contents later in your manuscript you can just um, open your Excel file and copy then paste it to your Yes. Then. Now, let us move on to the conceptual framework. So, what is a conceptual framework? A conceptual framework illustrates what you expect to find through your research. It defines the relevant variables for your study and maps out how they might relate to each other. You should construct a conceptual framework before you begin collecting data. It is often represented in a visual format. Usually, if you are pursuing a quantitative study, you are required to come up a conceptual framework. Now, given this working title that we have, Human Resource Management Practices and Employee Satisfaction in the Davao del Norte State College, and from the review of related literature and study, we are going to formulate a conceptual scheme for the research problem. So this is a tentative theoretical explanation of the phenomenon or the problem we are going to investigate. Now, the left picture is the statement of the problem. Out from the research problem, we formulated a conceptual framework as can be seen in the right picture. 
Note that the conceptual framework should be reduced in a paradigm a schematic diagram showing the variables of the framework and their interrelationship. The theoretical scheme is the basis for formulating the research hypothesis. Now, let us move on to theoretical framework. A theoretical framework consists of concepts and together with their definitions and reference to relevant scholarly literature, existing theory that is used for your particular study. The theoretical framework must demonstrate an understanding of theories and concepts that are relevant on the topic of your research paper and that relate to the broader areas of knowledge being considered. In quantitative study, this is usually a theory, proposition, model, study with author anchored or linked to the study. A theory has a name. If none, it is a proposition or model. In quantitative study, this is commonly referred as theory-based or theoretical lens. Here are some examples. In the left picture is a theoretical framework formulated in my master's thesis, which is quantitative in nature. So, the study is anchored in the e-government framework formulated by Noor et al. 2008. So, the said framework is divided into four dimensions, namely access, availability, equity, and democracy. So, whereas in the right picture is the theory base or the theoretical lens I came up in my dissertation, which is a qualitative undertaking. So, my study is anchored on paradox of well-being by Herzbach. And two. So that's all for today. I hope you learned something. Thank you very much for listening and watching my tutorial videos. Please support me by subscribing and sharing my video tutorials to your friend. If you have suggestions for my next vlog, do not hesitate to comment down below. God bless you everyone. This is Sergi. Until next time.